Hello guys, I hope you're doing well. In the previous video, I asked you whether I should make spontaneous videos or read from a teleprompter and most of the answers were, Kevor, please make spontaneous videos. So here we go, but brace yourself for longer videos in the upcoming videos. Uh, in the previous video, I addressed the strategy of the United States under um, Joe Biden administration and I divided Syria into different files. If you haven't watched it, it's very important for you first to go and watch that episode. You can find it here. Uh, because in this episode, I will talk about one of these files, which is the eastern shores of the Euphrates. In this eastern shores of the Euphrates, the United States has over 2,000 uh, soldiers, occupation forces, and they have different posts. But the United States has trained and armed and prepared an armed militia called the Syrian Democratic Forces, uh, or we will call it today the SDF. The Syrian Democratic Forces has been uh, formed in October 2015, and they say their goal is to um, like a transition into a secular, democratic and federalized Syria. This group has over now 100,000 fighters, according to their estimates, according to the SDF estimates. Most of the fighters of the SDF uh, are from a Kur Kurdish ethnicity. The rest are, there are some other Assyrians, Armenians, Turkmen, and some Arabic uh, tribes participating in the SDF. These different ethnic uh, components of the SDF, they all agree on one enemy, which is fighting ISIS. Uh, and they also agree on a secular and democratic Syria. However, they differ on the federalization of Syria. The Kurds mainly want a federalized Syria. The rest of the ethnicities, they don't want a federalized Syria. However, it is also very important to note that the Kurds do not live exclusively in the eastern shores of the Euphrates. For example, in Aleppo and in uh, Damascus, uh, there is a big Kurdish community and, and I'm myself from Aleppo and I lived among a Kurdish community. And if you go to Aleppo or to Damascus, you will find out that uh, the majority of the Kurds in Aleppo and Damascus, they are against uh, a federal state. They are for a united Syria. However, in this episode, we will focus on the Kurds who want a federal state or they are calling for a division and independence from the Syrian state. It is also important to note that between 2001 and 2014, when um, the Syrian army was capable of providing uh, military support, uh, the SAA, or the Syrian Arab Army, they provided arms, ammunition and training to this uh, Kurdish militias, especially in the northern part of uh, Syria, in Afin, in Azaz, and in, in other towns and cities. However, after 2014, when <clears throat> this ISIS, and Nusra, FSA, Free Syrian Army, they were advancing, and the Syrian army uh, was incapable of providing more support to the Kurdish militias, the Syrian army started to withdraw from certain areas and um, I mean 70% of Syria was occupied uh, by ISIS, al-Nusra and other terrorist organizations in September, October 2015, uh, for example. So when the Syrian army was incapable of providing aid to the Kurdish militias in order for them to fight against the terrorists, the United States used this circumstances, exploited it well, and uh, stepped in and filled the vacuum of the Syrian army and started supporting the YPG uh, or the Kurdish militias. However, the Americans told the Kurds like, look, uh, Turkey considers you a terrorist organization as a YPG, so you have to change your name or rebrand yourself. So the Kurds came with this uh, beautiful uh, name, Syrian Democratic Forces. Even there is an American general says this was so beautiful to add the democracy in the middle of this uh, brand in order to give the impression that they are democratic. So it is a rebranded YPG under an SDF or the Syrian Democratic Forces uh, group. So most of the SDF fighters are uh, located or their spots are in the eastern shores of the Euphrates. Uh, 
And in this part of uh, Syria, it's this part of Syria is very rich of oil, wheat, and water. So uh, the, this, this Kurdish militias, or let's call them the separatists, are controlling Syria's most of wheat, 50% of Syria's oil and gas uh, resources, or refineries, and also water. But the Kurds in the eastern shores of the Euphrates consist of 30% of the overall population there. So 70% are either Arabic clans, tribes, uh, Armenians, Assyrians, Syriacs, Turkmens, and many other uh, ethnicities, religions, religious sects. So if the Kurds in Syria are between one and a half million and two million people, um, not all of them live in the eastern shores of the Euphrates. We don't have an exact estimation. Maybe let's say, one million of them live there, maybe even less, we don't know. But even among within this small number of people, they consist of only 30%. So it's really like this strong army of fighters are controlling most of Syria's uh, natural resources, plus they are a minority in that area. Um, if we see the estimates of the Kurds, they consist of 10% of Syria. So... I don't know, maybe 7 or 8% of them live in the eastern shores of Tifet. I, I'm not really sure because we don't have, as I mentioned, uh, an exact ex estimates or official estimates. So the Syrian army or the Syrian government and the Kurds, they're not really enemies. So they fought together in different battles. However, they differ strongly on the demand of the Kurdish separatists to have a federalized state. So the Damascus government offered to the Kurds, first, more cultural rights, two, MPs in the parliament, and three, maybe a minister. So if you wait how many Kurds are there in, in Syria, of course, one minister or maybe two ministers or two, three MPs are more than enough. The Armenians, for example, have now... Um, three MPs in the, in, in, the, in the parliament, they don't have a minister. But Syria, in all cases, it's not, it, the political system is not based on a distribution like these quotas, you know. But in all cases, the Damascus government has offered them. So the first thing that Damascus government offered them is the cultural rights. Some people say Kurds were deprived from their cultural rights in the last decades in Syria because it's a Basist, uh, pan-Arabist government. But this is uh, partly true. However, the fuller story is, or the fuller picture is, um, there is a big portion of the Kurdish, uh, of the Kurds who live especially in the eastern shores of the Euphrates. They are not Syrians. They came either from, uh, they escaped oppression either from Turkey or during the era of uh, Saddam Hussein, they also fled from his persecution and oppression against the Kurds. So they resettled in Syria. Now, Syria has a strict policy of not giving uh, citizenship or nationality or passport to migrants or refugees. For example, for the Palestinians, they don't have a Syrian nationality or passport because Syria believes in uh, the right of return for the Palestinians. So if you give them uh, the Syrian nationality, you give them full rights, like they can work, they can study for free in Syria, they have a health care, everything, except for a nationality because uh, Syria wants them to return into their homes in Palestine. The second is the Kurds. So uh, Syria also knows that some of these Kurds who fled in Syria from Turkey or from Iraq, they have separatist tendencies, and now we are seeing it clearly in Syria. So Syria deprived them from Syrian citizenship. However, Syria then granted them citizenship after 2011 when the war erupted in Syria in order to appease the Kurds, let's say. But obviously, since the intervention of the United States in Syria, uh, the Kurds felt that they are strong because in their back, is the United States and the United States is providing them with uh, all sorts of weaponry and um, even salaries for their leadership. So the Kurds refuse the offer of the Syrian government and they say we want federalism and two decentralized political and economic system. So 10% of Syria, which consists of the Kurds, they live in 
not all of them, but part of them live in 30% or they want 30% of Syria and Syria's most of natural resources. It's, in my opinion, this is ridiculous because, of course, the distribution of the wealth or natural resources should be on all Syrians and not like on the Kurds, like 50%. Imagine that you have 50% of your oil is going to one component of your society, which consists of 10% of your entire population and the rest 50% to the 90% of the people. Does it make sense for you? I don't know. For me, it doesn't make any sense. Huh? So the Kurds are using or the separatists from the Kurds are using the US support in order to create a de facto state in the eastern shore of the Euphrate based on um, uh, the Kurdish ethnicity. Some people will, of course, disagree with me, but if you follow the situation underground, you will realize that, of course, the leadership of the SDF is Kurdish. They're from the YPG. Uh, the, the, the forces underground who are controlling most of the resources are from the Kurdish ethnicity. They are forcing the schools of the Armenians, of the Assyrians, to adopt Kurdish curriculum, for example. This is a sort of oppression against these people and they are keeping the oil for themselves or selling it outside of syria and they are financing some of the revenues of this oil they are financing the u.s occupation forces in syria so what's happening is like two weeks ago the kurdish separatists they besieged a few neighborhoods in hasake and kamishli uh, these areas are 95 percent in the hands of the kurds but there is like small enclaves of neighborhoods uh, that belong to the Syrian government and in these areas um, the people are loyal to the Syrian government so the Kurdish separatists besiege these areas they are banning food, wheat, water, electricity, uh, fuel etc to the people so there is a growing and growing let's say negative feeling sentiments among the people against these Kurdish separatists and uh, worse still is a clash has happened between the Syrian side and the Kurdish side and the one uh, a Syrian uh, person or a man uh, died yesterday during this uh, conflict. But in my opinion, this is mostly instigated by the United States now in order to create um, an, an enclave state or an island state mostly consists of the Kurds and those who are pro-government you need to kick them out so it's a, some sort of an ethnic cleansing but without really killing or slaughtering these people but when you deprive them from food medicine water wheat etc of course you're telling them leave so uh, you're telling them to leave so um in my opinion uh, ethnic cleansing is not only when you uh, ethnically cleanse people like the ottomans did to the armenians but also through deportation or to uh, forcing them to uh, resettle into other geographies into other areas in syria so what the kurds are doing they're creating an island state with growing enmity with the neighborhood they are in bad terms with turkey and now they are making um, creating hostilities with other uh, communities in Syria. So the question is, what if the United States withdraws from these areas? Do you think the United States will stay forever? No. The United States doesn't have a strategic interest to stay forever in Syria. And the United States is incapable of creating an island state based on Kurdish separatists who are a minority in that area, unless they ethnically cleanse 70% of the people there. So, in my opinion, this is really not realistic. And what the leadership of the Kurdish separatists are doing is suicidal for the Kurds themselves in the first place by creating these hostilities with the neighborhood, especially with the Syrians, Arabs, Assyrians, Armenians, etc. Uh, only two days ago, I have read the article of the former ambassador to, uh, of the United States to Syria, Robert Ford. And he clearly calls this Kurdish region as, or the eastern shores of the Euphrates, of a baby state for the United States. So it's pretty clear that this is a US-backed um, um, enclave or an island in Syria in order to first federalize Syria, decentralize Syria, decentralization in a country like Syria that 
has over 20, 22 ethnicities and religious sects is a preparation for a division. Uh, anyone with uh, basic sanity or understanding of Syria knows that federalization is a preface for uh, division. And this is what Israel wants from Syria. This is a historic demand of Israel in Syria to divide Syria into uh, ethnic and religious uh, lines, which will give legitimacy to Israel to declare itself as or give legitimacy to its already declared the Jewish state in uh, Israel. So, in my opinion, what the Kurds are doing is, uh, or the separatists from the Kurds are doing, is suicidal, and they are pushing themselves first into uh, antagonism against uh, a bigger portion of the Syrians. So, in my opinion, first they have to uh, help themselves by distancing themselves from the Americans, uh, because the Americans have no future in Syria, and therefore they will have to face the repercussions of their actions now. But I want to close up this uh, episode with just one idea that came into my mind also the other day. I wrote it on Twitter. The so-called left in uh, Europe and the United States, they are very romantic uh, towards this uh, the Kurdish cause. And they have these fantasies uh, for uh, female uh, Kurdish fighters, etc., etc. So only this week we have seen a picture of a one of the female fighters shooting on civilians in uh, in Hasake. So will uh, the so-called left uh, socialist left in uh, <laughs> in Europe and the United States um, condemn this? I doubt. But the crazy part of it is, how can any person be uh, an anti-fascist, anti-imperialist, socialist, or a communist, or anarchist, or whatever? And side with a, like an armed group, the Syrian Democratic Forces of the YPG, that is mainly backed, supported, funded, armed, supplied, vetted by the biggest imperialist power in the world, which is the United States. So in your opinion, what's the explanation of this? Please let me know in the comments below, because I would like to read your opinions as well. And if you're new to my channel, I invite you to subscribe and also you can support my channel by simply going to Patreon. You can find the link in the description below and you can become my patron and buy me a coffee per month or a coffee and the cookies per month, which really helps me a lot in order to stay independent and deliver to you uh, information from Syria and also in the region and give you my commentary and opinion regarding these geopolitical issues. So I've been your host Kero Kalmasian and see you next time.